if I have a greenhouse, okay, so I'll probably plant several plants and let it grow. No, there's a better way to do it. Try to hang it, try to push it, try to pull it. We're standing in this place that's a hub of thinking creatively about how to maximize everything. Exactly. It was real people with real ambition who transformed this land from the desert into an agricultural dreamland, like the one we're standing in right now. And when you think about the miracle of the transformation, the depth of that transformation, you realize what a unique characteristic those people truly had. We're looking at a flourishing, green, amazing desert, which it's kind of an oxymoron. Instead of struggling, you're sitting in a place that is a mass exporter of goods to the entire world. It's layer on layer on layer on layer of innovation, research, discovery, necessity pushing into just really creative ideas. Out of every challenge grows an opportunity here in the desert. You're walking through the desert and you keep looking at all these plants and you're saying to yourself, there must be something more. I've met two kinds of Israelis. The ones that a challenge for them is a, is a closed door and that's it. And the kind of Israelis that said that the closed door is only an excuse to get into this room through the window. I took a journey deep into southern Israel, to the Arava. The Arava is a long desert valley along the border with Jordan that stretches from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Elat and it's incredibly hot and dry here. Surprisingly, it's also a mainstay of Israel's agriculture industry. What a place, Nadav. No place like home. Look at this beautiful view. This is what we see every morning from our window. And it's very much not what you would expect from uh, the middle of the desert, quote unquote. More agriculture than many areas of the country have. Are probably greener than most of, a lot of the places that you've been at. And uh, this is, you know, the land of the endless summer. Right now we're in Chatziva, a cooperative agricultural village in southern Israel, or a moshav, as it's known in Hebrew. It was founded in 1965 as part of Israel's desert agriculture revolution. With 150 independent farms operating today, Chatziva remains a key player in making sure desert farming continues to thrive. Nadav, who oversees the entire moshav, gave me the grand tour. So let, let's go back to your origin story. You're not of this place. I'm not originally. Originally of this place. It's... How did you end up in the middle of the desert? The Zionist dream still, you know, exists and lives in our hearts. What is that in your mind? So look, we <clears throat> are about, we're half a mile from the Jordanian border and to the west also nothing there. We've decided we want to grow our kids here and basically make the desert bloom, bring a different kind of Israel here on a human level. And right now I'm the CEO of the Emo Shop. So I wasn't even born here, not raised here, but now I, you know, as they say, I run this joint. When you get into your car and you drive south of Be'er Sheva into the desert, you see a lot of yellow, you know, this is desert, why would I want to live here? And then you take a left turn into the Moshav and you see a lot of green. And every time we have people that haven't spent much time here, they say, it's amazing. I didn't realize it's so much green here. The Israeli market is very small. How many people in Israel eat? What, eight million people? It's nothing. We grow for about 80 million people because people are, you know, persistent, they're trying, and it's working. The topsoil here is something that almost nothing grows on. And we can see date farms and grapefruits, peppers and tomatoes and all kind of, uh, you know, it's the good stuff. things that don't belong in this place, basically. It's a ton of things that don't belong in this place. Okay. And, and also the knowledge that people mm -hmm. have gained through the years, we don't keep it to ourselves. Basically, we're teaching the world how to feed itself. Now you've entered Moshav Chatzeva. See the, the day trees mm -hmm. and the little uh, turnabout that says in the Negev, the people of Israel will be tested by David Ben-Gurion. This is how we live our so, life. So far, it seems like you've done well with this test. So, so, far, so, so far, so good. So far, so good. These are called net houses. They're not greenhouses. This is a greenhouse. You would grow tomatoes in it, cucumbers. And to our left, it's tunnels, eggplants, watermelons. You can see we also grow corn here. 
Israeli agriculture is very high tech. We moved from throwing some water on the ground and see whatever it grows to drip irrigation, hanging the plants, making more out of the three major things that you need for growing something. You need soil, you need water, you need sun. So sunlights we have year round. Water, we don't have good quality water here, but we drill for about a mile deep and we take very salty water, mm -hmm. but we learn how to use them in the fields. Even the soil that we step on, most of the crops are not grown on this soil. So we bring soil from other parts of Israel. We we'll put it on the top soil that already exists and then we grow on it. About 100 years ago, when Jews from mostly European countries, cold countries, when they moved to Israel, they wanted to tear off this image of the Jew that was always looked down and always were looked down at. And overnight, they, they shed the, the shell of uh, the diaspora of like of 2,000 years of being detached from the land and the country. You saw a new Jewish face. You saw the strong farmer. You don't see the black clothes. You don't see the long beard. You see the strong Jew that is moving to Israel and making the desert bloom. It's sort of like the ultimate test of character. You can't be soft and make it in the desert. Even if you look into the biblical narrative, you can't ever achieve something of virtue or quality without going through a desert phase, without the hardship and the struggle. Let's show you some of our greenhouses. We talk so much. Here you go. Welcome. We have the cherry tomatoes, which are very famous for Israel. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the way that we grow them, this is a stem, right? This is a tomato stem. Mm -hmm. So it should just grow from the ground straight up, right? But what we do here, we take it around, back and forth, back and forth. Why? When you have a single stem that goes up, you can have 20 tomatoes, mm -hmm. 40 tomatoes. Here you can take out of one stem, one plant, about 400 tomatoes. Why do we even need to grow things on the ground? We have strawberries. There's a little bit of dirt in it, and they use whatever water they need. And because they're in an angle, whatever leftover water flows down to a water tank, and you reuse the water. Here you have mint. Now, why grow mint on the ground? Why not grow it on a post? Let it go up. Easier to pick, less insects, less bugs. If I have a greenhouse, okay, so I'll probably plant several plants and let it grow. No, there's a better way to do it. Try to hang it, try to push it, try to pull it. We're standing in this place that's a hub of thinking creatively about how to maximize everything. Exactly. So tell I me know. how it is. Just dig into it. Oh, this is juicy. Great, huh? Mm. Very sweet. I can live off of that. So right now, we're going to a date farm that a friend of mine is working on. It's right over there. So now we're going to meet Tomer. Hey, Tomer. Hi, nice to How's meet you. How's it going? <laughs> okay. Coming up? Yeah, yeah, we're coming up. So Tomer, yeah. you're the real deal. When we think about the people out in the desert making agriculture happen, you're the face of that. I appreciate it. I want to teach my kids also to know what is hard work and why we're here in Israel. I need to do it myself before I teach other people to do it. So I take the challenge on myself right now. So I imagine, Toma, most of the work happens at height, and we're here mainly because we want to go up. So let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. So here you can actually see the view. On this side is the Moshav itself, mm -hmm. Atseva, more Bay plantation, greenhouses. When you get up at height, it's even more shocking how much there's a contrast. You're in the middle of the most deserty desert you could imagine. This is exactly the future of agriculture in Israel. If Tomer and her likes will choose to come here to learn about it, to work in this environment for a year or two, I can see a bright future because this is going to be a very high tech field of expertise. We think here in the Arava, this is the, the next field where Israel is going to lead the world, and Tomer is a per perfect example for it. The early pioneers who came back to the land in the late 19th century endured incredible hardship trying to cultivate the land again. And over time, with the development of technology, things got easier. Today, things are much different. Israel became an exporter of technology and knowledge to the farthest corners of the earth. In fact, in deserts around the world today, plants and fields are growing with technology coming out of the land of Zion. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom, and God bless you for Jerusalem.